The New York Times spoke to more than a dozen White House and administration officials to get a sense of the inner workings of the Trump administration when it comes to immigration policy. Now back in March, there were a lot of issues that came up in regard to what Trump wanted to do at the border. And now we have a better idea of the infighting that took place and how Trump would demand things that were unlawful or illegal. And then when members of his own administration tried to explain to him that these actions were unlawful or illegal, he would either fire them, berate them, or just straight up replace them with a bunch of yes men. So let me give you some of the details from this report. This is in the New York Times. Privately, the president had often talked about fortifying a border wall with a water filled trench stocked with snakes or alligators, <laughs> prompting aides to seek a cost estimate. He wanted the wall electrified with spikes on top that could pierce human flesh. After publicly suggesting that soldiers shoot migrants if they threw rocks, the president backed off when his staff told him that was illegal. But later in a meeting, aides recalled he suggested that they shoot migrants in the legs to slow them down. So this story has even more twists and turns and more insanity. But look at all the insanity packed into that paragraph. Let's break it down one by one. Snakes and alligators. What a child, what a child. The president, oh, yo, can we have a boat? Put some big scary alligators, maybe crocodiles, put some snakes there. I mean, if you're a government official, you have to be, and, and by the way, they're described as such. Remember, I talked to a dozen people in the room. Yeah. And they're like, is the president of the United States really telling us to go get alligators and snakes and put it in, in water by the border? It's they had to get a cost estimate. It yeah. was so real. All right, how many alligators can we put by the border and how many snakes? Where would the snakes go? Could the snakes move? Oh, right, snakes do move, right? We gotta get a cost estimate on yeah. that. Oh my God. Guys, 25th Amendment, come on. We're having a nonsense conversation with a guy who's clearly not mentally capable of being president. These were discussions, again, that took place in March of this year. Yes. So this, this story is based on stuff that happened months and months ago. So Kirsten Nielsen, he berates her, she's head of Homeland Security at that point. Does terrible things to her, we got some awful quotes a little bit later. Yeah. But I don't, I have no sympathy for her. Anyone in that meeting has to come out and go to the press immediately and go, we gotta go, 25th Amendment, go to the cabinet, do whatever you gotta do. The president is insane. So, all right, so you got the alligators and the crocodiles and the snakes, etc. cetera. Uh, and to be fair, I threw in crocodiles. He was just going gators and snakes, okay? <laughs> and then he says, all right, well, why don't we murder them? And they're like, Mr. President, it's illegal to murder people trying to come into the country. And he's like, ah, God damn it, he gets really frustrated and he gets mad at them. Let's note that that like, okay, we have a president who would like to do that and commit crime after crime after crime and kill these people. Yeah. And then he says, well, how about this? How about we shoot him in the leg? Can we shoot him in the leg? What is this, Austin Powers? Did he, did he have a bald cat that he was stroking while doing it? Can maybe we'll get, we'll get, let's get sharks with laser beams on their heads. Can we shoot them in the leg if not in the torso? So do you also shoot unaccompanied minors in the legs, uh, Mr. Uh, Anti-abortion President, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. okay, so let me give you some more. Uh, now, according to the Times, by the end of the week, again, this is in March, the seat, uh, seat of the pants president had backed off his threat because he had threatened to just shut down the border completely and people were trying to explain to him, it's a bad idea, you have Americans who are going in, you know, in and out of the country because they do business in Mexico, you have tourists in Mexico, American tourists in Mexico, it's a bad idea. There's trade going on, you shouldn't do this. And so um, he was obviously irritated with people who were telling him, here are the laws, here are the issues, let's just fully inform you on what would happen if you get, what you're, what, get your way. And he responded with, I have absolute power to shut down the border. Now later, he finally, I, I wouldn't say gave up, but he stopped arguing with them. However, according to the Times, uh, he just later replaced people with yes men who would give him exactly what he wanted. So as we know, Kirsten Nielsen is no longer serving in the Trump administration. 
for obvious reasons. Uh, they had huge disagreements simply because Nielsen kept trying to tell him what the laws were. Now at one point during a meeting in March, he told uh, members of his administration, quote, you are making me look like an idiot. I ran on this, it's my issue, right? Now in the room you had Kirsten Nielsen, Mike Pompeo, Kevin McAleenan, uh, Stephen Miller, Mick Mulvaney, and Jared Kushner. So he's arguing that these people are making him look stupid when he's the one who is suggesting, or I should say demanding insane things like gators and snakes at the border. No, no, we're underplaying the quote. When he, he apparently shouted, you're making me look like an idiot. No, you're making yourself look like an idiot. And by the way, I mean, look, I, I'm watching Secession on HBO and the CEO makes some of his employees do unbelievably demeaning things and I think this can't be real. It is real, it's in the White House. What pathetic guys are they sitting there having this mentally deranged, stunted person yelling at them, you're making me look like an idiot, I want alligators and snakes and I want you to show them, you're making me look stupid. Are you, ins you look insane, you're insane. And those pathetic excuse for human beings are sitting there go, oh yes, Mr. President, I'm sorry, Mr. President for making you look stupid. The alligators and the snakes was such a good idea, Mr. President. I'm so sorry, Mr. President. Pathetic, pathetic. Okay, and then he f wound up getting rid of half the people who objected uh, to his stupid ideas in the first place. So, so okay, here, I, I'm gonna give you one thing from uh, a, another uh, near the end of Kirsten Nielsen's reign, okay? So she's desperately trying to get him to follow the law. And what, and by the way, do things that are, are can get actually get done. Mm -hmm. So he, sa he says, uh, I, I need a cement wall. She's like, but Mr. President, this one doesn't have to do with the law. This one has to do with it'll take too long and it's too expensive. So by the end of your term, you won't have any wall, right? Mm -hmm. We've already agreed that it's gonna be these steel slates. And it's we've been planning this for a long time. And remember, you've been in office all these years and we had these plans. If we change them now, you won't get any of the wall. And she comes up with a plan with the six C's, Congress, courts, communications, countries, criminals, cartels, etc. She's trying to put together a halfway intelligent plan. By the way, a plan that none of us would agree to. Right. That is super right wing. But he's too simple minded. And he's like, no, I don't like it. I wanted a cement wall. Now, of course, he didn't get the cement wall because it's impossible. Right, you can't get it built in time, even if you wanted to accomplish his objectives. And then she says, all right, look, he's like, I want it to look black, I want it to look good, okay? She's like, okay, no problem, but it costs a million dollars more per mile. He's like, I don't like that. But she's telling you a fact, it doesn't matter whether you like it or not. It costs a million dollars more, do you wanna do it or don't you wanna do it? You're the president, you make the decision, but you can't cry about a fact. Mm -hmm. Facts don't care about your feelings. <laughs> now, um, I wanna give you more on the issues that Trump had with Nielsen even before she really started in her position. Now remember, she was hired by Trump's former chief of staff, John Kelly. And from the get go, there was this notion that she was a so-called Bushy because she uh, supported Jeb Bush in the election. And uh, there were all these smears about how she's part of the deep state. And so at one point, Trump actually looked at her and said, quote, Lou Dobbs hates you and Coulter hates you. You're making me look bad. Uh, well, first of all, you got that mission accomplished on your own brother. Uh, but this is how the moron in chief is making decisions. Lou Dobbs, who is clinically insane and should be locked up in a mental institution. He's like, well, Lou Dobbs doesn't like you. And Coulter doesn't like you. Yeah. So you know what, uh, you're making me look bad. When God damn, I mean, this child of a man, 25th Amendment. You know, I mentioned it on CNN and people were like, "Oh no, 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 you can't talk about that. You can't talk about that. Are you crazy? You're nuts if you think we can't talk about how he is obviously mentally unstable. There's more. Um, so according to the Times, when Nielsen tried to get him to focus on something other than the border, the president grew impatient. During a briefing on the, on the need for new legal authority to take down drones, Trump cut her off mid-sentence and said the following. 
Kirsten, you didn't hear me the first time, honey. Oof. Shoot him down, sweetheart. Just shoot him out of the sky, okay? Look, uh, I, my loathing for him cannot be, go any higher after hearing that quote. If you thought the alligators and the stakes was insane, you're right. Shooting people, murdering them, unbelievable, etc. But here she is, a, a huge right winger, just trying to get this child to focus on practical things which would accomplish their right wing objectives mm -hmm. and what he promised the voters, his voters to build a wall, right? And now they're talking about drones and he demeans her as if she's the stupid one. Yeah, definitely. Right, she's like, hey, what can we do about the drones? Here's the intelligent plans we have on dealing with the drones, etc. He's like, no, you don't understand, honey. You just shoot him down, he's so stupid. And, and as he's doing it, since he's unaware of how unintelligent he is, yeah. he puts her down, sweetie. Yeah, so with that condescending tone. How many of you out there, if you're women, have heard that tone before from a man who had unearned confidence and never, doesn't know what he's talking about in the first place and then calls you sweetie and honey? Oh, please, let me explain it to you. You just shoot him down. God damn it, that's illegal and stupid, you idiot. Nielsen, yeah. by the way, look, she comes off as sympathetic here because Trump is being a monster to her. But have the backbone to walk out. Yes. And at yes. the end, she gets yes. fired in a humiliating way because she didn't have the courage to stand up for the American people and tell the truth about the idiot in charge of the country. Look, Gollum paid the consequences of being obsessed with power, right? And so, Lord of the Rings reference. Um, so <laughs> everybody got that. Anna. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I give myself some credit. But no, look, the people who have decided that their obsession with power is more important than doing the right thing and having principles, these are the consequences, right? This is what you're gonna have to deal with. And then I think of people like Mike Pompeo, who's now implicated in this impeachment investigation because he was listening in on that call with the Ukrainian president. Was the power worth it? Because now you're gonna have to deal with subpoenas, you're gonna have to deal with investigations. I just don't understand why they have no principles, they have no willingness to walk out. And so, yeah, there's like this, if you're a good person and you have feelings and emotions and you don't like to see people treated poorly, you read this and you find yourself feeling somewhat sympathetic. But at the end of the day, just remind yourself of why they were in that administration in the first place. Now, let me give you more on how Trump encouraged people to break the law. At one point, Trump turned to McAleenan, the Customs and Border Protection Chief, with a new idea. He wanted to stop letting migrants cross the border at all, with no exceptions. If you get into any trouble for it, Trump told him, I'll pardon you. Look at this authoritarian telling people in his administration to break the law and then, you know, making them feel okay about it because he'll just pardon them. Go ahead and break the law. Don't allow anyone in the country, regardless of what their situation is. And if you get into any trouble, don't worry, I'll just pardon you. Yeah. So he then went on to say that in a room full of people with McAleenan in it as well. McAleenan let him say it, and then the president walked out. And then he told everyone in the room, do not follow the president's orders. You will be in legal trouble and you will be arrested. Do not listen to him. Now, it doesn't matter because they all know Trump's an idiot. If you don't follow his orders, he doesn't notice anyway. He's, you think he follows up? You think he does any due diligence? You think he does any homework? No, he, they're like, he gave an illegal order, we're not gonna follow it. And of course, he never noticed because he's a moron. And so if you're offended by that, come on, man, you know it too, stop pretending. I don't care who you are, you know how stupid he is. How did they, by the way, get him to stop uh, to close with his idea of closing down the entire border? There's $200 billion of trade that goes every year between the two countries, let alone all the uh, people that would be affected and Anna mentioned earlier. They finally got the people who bribe them to talk to him. Now, the New York Times doesn't use those words, mm -hmm. but that's actually what happened. What they explain in the story is they sent in the US Chamber of Commerce and CEOs and business leaders who conveniently, by the way, also, now again, New York Times says the part where they sent in the business leaders, I'm filling in the context of who also give him campaign donations. He, by the way, he today he announced record campaign donations in the last quarter. So they send in the people who give him legalized bribes, and he goes, "Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I still like the idea, but you know what? 
okay, if you're giving me money, fine, okay, then we won't close down the border. Yeah. Okay, that's the only way that they got him to change his mind is through money. The only thing he listens to, he never listens to intellectual or intelligent arguments. Of course, he doesn't care about that. And last thing, guys, this gives you a sense of why he did what he did in Ukraine. Yes, I'm glad you're gonna make this point. <laughs> Look, uh, so still pundits on television and writers at the New York Times and Washington Post are trying to figure out his strategy. There's no goddamn strategy from a guy who thinks you should put gators and snakes at the border to dissuade people from coming. So the, he, the reason he just blurted out, hey, why don't you investigate Biden, okay? Uh, when that's obviously illegal to ask him another country to investigate your political opponent. Cuz he's too stupid to know that. And then why did he admit it in public? Everybody's like, well, I mean, if you committed a murder, you wouldn't admit it in public, would you? Trump would. I mean, because yeah. he's that stupid. How many times has he proposed a lot of these things he proposed in public, not the gators and the stakes, but he proposed closing down the entire border, which by the way also is a legal problem, etc. Mm -hmm. He proposes things that are illegal all the time. In fact, he proposed shooting people who throw rocks at the border, which is deeply illegal. He did that in public. Why does he do it? There's no strategy. It's because he's an idiot, one of the dumbest people who has ever served in any political office in this country. And if you're not calling him stupid, you're not a reporter. You're doing political correctness. Well, I mean, it could be intelligent to put gators and snakes at the border. Mm -hmm. it, could be a, it could be a decent human being to murder people crossing the border, etc. No, maniacally, historically, epically unintelligent. And I have to add one more thing, Jenk, because I thought you were gonna make this point. That was a good one, but I, there's one other point I wanted to make in regard to the actions he takes. Remember, he was the candidate who ran on this idea that he was all about law and order. That was the huge theme in the Republican National Convention in 2016. But in case after case, in situation after situation, he has shown that he has absolutely no regard for the rule of law. And so notice the pattern here. He keeps telling individuals in his administration to break the law, and then he says that he will pardon them. I emphasize that because in the case of Ukraine, in, in the case of hush money payments to women he slept with, all of those situations, he broke the law and doesn't think it's that big of a deal, right? He you, doesn't care about the rule of law, he is a criminal. He is a criminal and in, in his authoritarian mind, he is king of the world and he can pardon everyone including himself. You don't have to offer to pardon to people if you think they're not breaking the law. Exactly. And so it's way past time for the Democrats and the Republicans to hold them accountable and to say there is a rule of law in this country. Unfortunately for a lot of conservatives, and he takes advantage of this, when they say rule of law, they don't actually mean law and order. They don't mean following the laws and rules and regulations. They mean keep down the people who are not us and give us an unfair advantage. That's what they mean by law and order. They don't actually mean follow the law. This guy brazenly says you shouldn't cooperate with law enforcement. That that means you're a rat and a snitch. Mm -hmm. And he literally said in an interview, maybe we should make that illegal cooperating with law enforcement. Oh okay, and the conservative voters didn't care because they've never cared about rule of law. All they've cared about is I want more than you, and I want to keep you down. And for them, as stupid as he is, as horrible person as he is. He's kind of the perfect candidate. That's why they chose him out of 17 different people, cuz he's as monstrous as they are. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.